Mr. T with a tutorial on graphing sine and cosine functions and this is part two of a tutorial. In the first part we talked about graphing y equals a sine or cosine of bx and in this tutorial we're adding a letter d here, uh, something added or subtracted to the cosine or sine function and in the parentheses with the x we're subtracting a number. These will cause uh, vertical shifts, the D causes vertical shifts, and the C will shift the graph horizontally, shifting where we start our pattern. If you remember from the previous tutorial, the letter A affects the amplitude of the function, and so if we take the absolute value of A, we get our amplitude. Uh, we have a pattern of our curve uh, if it's sine or cosine, the sine curve is starts out on the midline at O and then goes high back to the midline, low, and O. And that's when A is positive. If A is negative, it flips that pattern. And for cosine function, our pattern is here. Again, that's if A is positive. If A is negative, that pattern is flipped. So all the H's become L's and all the L's become H's. Instead of the x-axis being our midline now, uh, our midline will be at the line y equals d. So whatever d is, that will be shifted up or down that number of units. And then to get our high and low, we have to add our amplitude and subtract our amplitude from that midline. Our period is still the same as we had last time, 2 pi divided by b and the increment or the interval that we're going to count on our x-axis as we go as we step through this period. So the distance for each of these transitions is the period over 4. And we'll be starting at C over B. Now remember in this template it's minus C. So when we look at this we're going to be taking the opposite of this number here. So if it's plus something in here it'll be shifting it left and if it's minus something it'll be shifting it to the right just like when we did the absolute value functions uh, earlier in the year. Okay, let's look at our first example. We have our equation up here and we're wanting to sketch two periods or two patterns of that function. So to start with we look at our A that gives us our amplitude so our amplitude is 2 and since it's a sine function and A is positive, our pattern is going to be Oholo. Our D value is 3, so we will be starting at 3 and going up 2 units to 5 and down 2 units to 1. Our period is 2 pi over B and B is 2. So our period is pi. That gives us an increment of period over 4, which is pi over 4. And we're going to start at C, which is pi over 2, divided by B, which is 2, and a half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. So we're counting by pi over 4s on our x-axis, and we're starting at pi over 4. So we're going to be starting here at pi over 4. And let's label each one. So this is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Let's make that a little finer here. 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4, let's go one more, this would be 10 pi over 4. If we went negative, this would be negative pi over 4. And let's put in bounds for our high and low. So if we go up uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we've got a uh, line here for our where our maximums will be. Just put some guides up here so that I can graph it, graph it straight. Uh, we're at uh, 3 here for our midline. And the bottom of our graph is here at 1. 
Again, the distance between here and here is our amplitude, and we have an amplitude up here. And now we're going to be graphing this pattern, so let me uh, graph this in red. So we're starting on the midline at pi over 4, so here we're going. And now this is our increment, pi over 4, so we can just go our pattern. We have the regular sine pattern. So we go up to high and then down to low. And we just keep repeating that uh, pattern. And if I was going backwards, we would be down here and then up here. So now if we sketch in the sine curve, a little crooked there, sorry. And we have our sine curve and we've included here one pattern, two patterns, and actually we've probably covered about three patterns here. So that's our first example. Let's look at our uh, second example here. So this time we have a negative a D value, a negative A value, and a negative C value. So let's see how that works. We also have here a value of pi, and we'll see how that affects our results. So our amplitude is 3, the absolute value of negative 3. And our pattern, we have a cosine, and it's flipped, so we start low. Our midline is at negative 2, and we're adding 3 to that, which would be positive 1, and subtracting 3, negative 5, for our high, O, and low line. Our period is 2 pi over pi, which is B, so we just get 2. So now when we number the axis, we won't have multiples of pi. It's a little easier, actually, to uh, label the axis, even though this looks more complicated. So our increment will be 2 over 4, which is 1 half. And we're going to start at pi over 4. And that's now negative because this is plus. Remember, I've got to take the opposite of that because our template has a minus sign there, which means we're going to start negative pi over 4. So we're shifting this left pi over 4 units. So this time my increment is not the same as my... Start, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. This is just one fourth, not pi, so that's one fourth. So we're starting here. If I count this as negative one fourth, now if our tick marks are would be halves, we would be starting here. So I'm going to, for this one, make every tick mark to be one fourth. So I'm actually going to count by one fourths. So this would be negative one fourth. This is zero, this is one-fourth, uh, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, five-fourths, six-fourths, seven-fourths, eight-fourths, nine-fourths, and here it would be eleven-fourths. Now we have to be a little careful. I'll talk about that when we sketch the graph. So let's get our uh, bounds, so we have our midline here at negative 2. Didn't make that very even, sorry. We're up at positive 1 for our upper bound, our high, our max. And if we go down 3 here, we're at our low. And we're going to start here at negative one-fourth at low. Now remember, my increment is one-half. So if I set each tick mark here to be one-fourth. So our next point is two over. So we're here. And again, we're going to go over two over. We're here. And now two over. We're back to the midline. And then here, we're back down. Up. here. So let's see if we got two patterns or if we need to extend this a little bit. Oops, that was not good. Let's try to do better than that. So 
let's see, we've got here one pattern, so we would have to keep going down to here to get our second full pattern. So this would be uh, at 11 fourths, this would be 13 fourths, and this would be 15 fourths. So now we have, so it's a little bit more complicated on your x-axis because we want every tick mark to be an even spacing. So I wouldn't want to have this be one fourth and then here count by one halves. I want them all to be the same. So I had to count by fourths, but our increments are by half. So we had to go to every other thing. So we've seen two examples here with graphing sines and cosines with the full complement of translations, stretches, and uh, I hope you have success graphing these yourself. See you at class.